So the next question here is as we are in a multidimensional universe, is our soul fragmented between our different incarnations, meaning that if one soul is trapped in the dark room, are all other selves also trapped? Okay. And what I'm starting to really see again within this uh, terminology and within the construct of our consciousness and how we're being taught to use our consciousness is we sometimes refer to states that we're supposed to be in and we're not correct about those states, right? So again, for me to insist that I'm trapped would like put me in a trapped position because what I'm saying is actually manifesting and that because I'm the controller of my own existence. So I have to be very careful about what I'm saying that I'm actually in. And then also, if you have a hard time doing that and you actually really do feel trapped, still remember that if you're observing yourself as being trapped, you're actually doing that from another point where you're not trapped because someone that is trapped is experiencing a trauma in which they cannot even be aware that what they're experiencing is what is going on, i.e. a trapped person doesn't think that they're trapped. So if you're observing yourself as being trapped into something or in a state of mind or in a state of consciousness, which very well can happen, still remember the most empowering thing is, is that you can, you're already viewing that from a stage of not being in it, and a simple juxtaposition allows you no longer to be trapped. So use words very carefully about what you're saying is going on with your soul and your consciousness. Now, what is happening, and I'll bring you the analogy here, is that we've discovered or explored just about as much of the divine feminine world that we're in as we've discovered personally the use of the chemicals and the essences and things that are here and likewise what the feminine is capable of doing. And so let me break this down. So what I'm saying is individually, not collectively, because a lot of times when we say, well, we've already cracked the speed of light and we already know how, what the atom looks like and we already know. And then we speak as if you, we speak as though you know, like that you have seen the atom before and that you know what nitrogen and boron mixed together does and that you know how to break down silver into an alchemical component. And that is not true. You don't know how to do that. You have to learn how to do that. You have to go into that exploration. So this, of course, is the danger of the collective. As I said, there's pros and cons because in this collective state, we're like, we we already know what, and it's like, but you have no experience in that. You're just admitting that others out there know, and you're saying that somehow what they know is a part of what you know, but that's not what's actually happening. It's a very paradoxical reality. So how much you know specifically about these chemicals and elements and things that belong in this divine feminine, which is the planet, how much you know about that stuff is about how much you've really explored. Likewise, even let's say for the masculine, which is not just the male, but the actual divine masculine force has explored the divine feminine about the same amount, meaning that as, as you've personally been able to explore it. So all of these things that you've yet to come to realize, like, for instance, let's just take our, 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 our beautiful sisters. When you put them all together, they all synchronize. They start actually having the same cycles on the same day. Then they are very subconscious. They're naturally tapped into the subconscious or lunar fields, which gives them another level of power. And because they have wombs, then they're capable of bringing physical wombs. They're capable of bringing physical objects into the reality rather fast by using this collective power. Now, how many men do you know have been able to completely explore the benefits in the use of something like that? That's about how much. So it's be, so what happens is, is that if we're on this thing where we're trying to like discover so much knowledge and wisdom, but we're constantly being distracted from how we truly get to that level of knowledge and wisdom, then it wouldn't allow us to reach it. It wouldn't allow us to penetrate it. And so that's what I'm really getting at right now for everyone here is to realize that the reason why we came here and that we're in these experiences is to explore. We find ourselves the most happiest in the most timeless state 
when we are exploring, if you can remember even the times that you've experienced in history or in the past of your life where you went on some level of exploration, especially with friends or explorations into self, those are generally your greatest times of awareness. But then we somehow get caught in another world where exploration is no longer allowed, where everybody seems to supposedly know everything. And then everybody speaks in this collective, like what someone else figured out is exactly what they already have figured out, even though they never went through the experience themselves. And we have to be careful of that because your personal exploration is your personal growth. And then when you start realizing just how much you haven't explored and seen yet, you will actually start restoring happiness back into your life. And this could have a lot to do with why you haven't gone out of the country in a while, why you don't actually study other languages and things that act, why you haven't studied chemicals, why you haven't really looked into animals and seen how their brains are put together and how their vocal boxes are put together, because all of that is exploration of the divine feminine. And because we still have so much to explore, I don't think that the divine feminine journey of exploration is going to end anytime soon. I don't think that the parents are going to conclude the venture because you actually haven't discovered as much as what's in this universe or university yet. And if we keep getting distracted with these half-baked concepts that keep being fired out by the communities uh, or the overall collective conscious community, which is under heavy manipulation and bombardment, then we never get into the exploration of the divine feminine aspects and what it has to reveal to ourselves, uh, us. And again, that's for male or female human alike. Okay. Now, the next thing is, is that just in answering this question, is the soul fragmented? So now let's imagine that since all is self, your divine feminine and masculine, but you haven't actually really discovered much about or explored much of yourself. What fragmentation would be is that small part of what you've discovered about yourself so far. That's what fragmentation is. It's just that there's only so much of you at all that's even aware and you go into exploration to become more aware of who you are.